I lost my other ring. I scraped the shit out of this one. It happens. I mean, I got a gold one for you if you want it. I don't. <laughs> um, geez, I saw this thing on Twitter, and it's from the Bleacher Report. It's like BR Gridiron, and it says, who are the best brothers in the NFL? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what I would say pairs of, pair of, pairs of siblings. Pairs of siblings. Brothers. Oh. But two of the families have three brothers in the NFL. The Watts? The Watts? Who's the other one? I don't know because uh, all of them are average. So I know not the Kelseys. Two of them are average. Um, The Edmonds. Oh. Pff. I never said. Is so, Chase Edmond one of them? No. No. He's, who the the, fuck he's I? who I thought of at first. He's the Cardinals running back. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he's their backup or what, but um, so you got Stefan Diggs and Trayvon. So I actually Diggs. was going to say Diggs for three. If this was like two weeks ago, I would have said three Diggs because there's it's Stefan Diggs, Trevon Diggs. Those are the brothers. Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon. I, I wanted to say Trevon Diggs. But then there's who's the other one? There's one. I think he's on the Seahawks. Oh, they do have a Diggs. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Keep going. I'm going to look it up. So, J.J. Watt, T.J. Watt, and Derek Watt. I always forget that they have a third brother. Because J.J. and T.J., like, they, they interact with each other on, like, Twitter and whatnot. And they're also both very good. Not that Derek Watt isn't good, but a fullback, right. just, you're, as, a, as an edge rusher or a linebacker, you're, it's a more... Um, impactful position. Than it's, fullback. It's a more skill Espe- position. Yes. It's especially so nowadays. How, how A lot of teams don't even carry a fullback anymore. Yes. That the Vikings are one of the only ones. The Vikings do. Vikings, Steelers, obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, who else? Do the Cowboys? Maybe. A lot of them just throw a tight end back there. Right. Because you can get away with that. And tight ends are a little bit more versatile than fullbacks, so I just think there's more you can do with them in general. Yep. Then you have Nick and Joey Bosa, who are both studs. Uh, then Terrell Edmonds, Trey Edmonds, and Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds is the only one I've heard of. He's a linebacker in the Bills. Okay. Trey Edmonds is a running back on the Steelers. Terrell Edmonds is a running back on the, on the Steelers. Or safety on the Steelers, sorry. So you have two pairs of siblings on the Steelers. Because the Watts, JJ and Derek Watt, are both on the Steelers. Yep. That's, that's, wild. I mean, that's absurd. Can and you imagine that? One, both of them. So two of them are on defense. You have a safety. Uh, of that One of the Edmonds is a safety. And then uh, TJ Watt is an outside linebacker. And then the other two... Derek Watt and Trey Edmonds are running back fullback. That's absurd. That's so weird. Quand- Quandre Diggs? Oh, no shit. Quandre Diggs? On yeah. The he's what on the Seahawks. He? Uh, safety. Is okay. that say Quandre? I don't know. Q-U-A-N-D-R-E. Speaking of fucking safeties on the Seahawks, how about fucking <laughs> Jamal Adams? <laughs> Best in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best part was the edit when they when they play that and it goes I think uh, one of the captions I saw it said life comes at you fast and it has Jamal Adams for those of you that don't know that it was a Sunday night game and all these players announced they say their name uh, it, and it uh, down low it shows their position and um, they say their, their school number or whatever but they say their the university they went to and instead of saying the university jamal adams just goes he looks in the camera and they always look in the camera and they say their name and their school and he goes like this <laughs> gotta get into character and he says it with a straight fucking face too by the way i gotta do this one jamal adams i'm the best in the nation <laughs> <laughs> but it also so, so you meant to say this it says like your ranking for your position yeah. at the bottom so it's like whatever your rank is out of however many there are in that position and what was his? It was 62 like 62 out of 85. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this. I did see something that uh, apparently it was like, it was in homage of this guy that was a younger football player or corner. I don't know if he was like really good or anything, but he was a mm. defensive player that, that uh, had passed away. He, so, and what I will say, he is fucking good. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, but the, he is really good. The, the pro football focus, their ratings are interesting. They, they take are interesting. Some different stats. Um, it's there's funny some be- that are that like, I don't know. It seems like you can kind of twist their stats to yes. kind of put, prove whatever agenda you want. Colin Coward does that a lot with Baker Mayfield. 
Yeah, he does. He always finds like, oh, you know, this quarterback who's no one's ever heard of has a better stat than Baker Mayfield, so we're going to put this stat against him and like yeah. whatever. I think Baker Mayfield's good. I think, I think he's good too. Yeah. No, I just think the Jamal Adams thing's, thing is funny because there was a highlight of him dropping a wide open interception. Not just dropping it, but hitting it hit him, him in the face. In the face. Mask. Yeah. So that <laughs> was the edit yeah, I was talking about is they have they cut to that and then they go Mike Royce is best in the nation and then goes right to him dropping that pass in his face. <laughs> yeah. Um but apparently he was paying homage to this younger guy that had died, right? And I watched this video and I see it and it was, you know, that younger dude and he's recording himself and he goes, I'm the best in the nation. He says it just like that, you know? He's got his teeth are like fucking just flooded. Like, I don't know if it was like diamonds or if they were like a weird ass fucking color, but they're like not. He covered his fucking teeth with something. I don't know. I'm too white to fucking understand any of that <laughs> yeah. shit. Uh, I grew up in the, the suburbs. Grills. Yeah, I grew up in suburbs. Uh, we didn't, I didn't see grills like that growing up. But um, no. <laughs> anyway, I saw that video. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then someone else goes, watch the full video though. And he keeps going and he goes, he goes, man, I'm raping him out here. <laughs> I go, oh, oh. shit. <laughs> so he made a straight up rape joke for sure. Um, I want to pull it up right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Also, before, before we do that, we also forgot Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Chiefs, Eagles. And then Quincy Williams and Quinnen Williams. Names are way too close together for <laughs> brothers, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Change it. Change it. Your mom. Mrs. Williams, fix that. <laughs> fix that, please. Change it. Um, one of them, go by your middle names. Younger younger son, go by your middle name. Yep. Uh, then there's Devin McCourty and Jason McCourty. Uh, safety on the Patriots, defensive back, so corner on the Dolphins. So that's interesting. Um, and I've heard of both of them, actually. I've heard, yeah. <laughs> it says, what about Ryan Fitzpatrick and Minka Fitzpatrick? That's funny. Uh, for those of you that don't, that don't know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is like very Irish and, and white, and Minka Fitzpatrick is very not. <laughs> no. Um, one sec, I'm looking this up. Oh, here we go. This is a full one. How long is it? Two. Why only two, man? Why are you gonna try to get three? You know, I ain't no DB, but I'm gonna do what I gotta do. You know, really? Team win. I thought you look like a DB. Look at, I mean, cause you play, you can play defense. You can play all American. I can do it now. You can do it now. Yeah, I can do it. But I'm trying to focus on my position, running back. You know, I'm four stars. I'm trying to get that last one. You know, I get that last one. I'm why, why don't we give you four stars, man? They hating on you. They hating on Dylan Chiefs. They hating on me, set. You know, yeah, gotta man. be setting in the mix. Hey, you know Larry Bluestein, right? Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, man. Larry said that you ain't even the best player at Dillard, man. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You tripping, man. Oh, what are you playing with me for like that? I don't know, you, man. I, are, you saying, are you saying that to give me crunk, though? Yeah, yeah, baby. He said he want me yeah. to put two thighs this year. Tell Larry you're the best player in the state right now. Oh, Larry, you know we good, boy. You already know. I'm the best in the nation. I'm going to be number one right now. Hey, man, I see you and Coach Carter going back and forth. You letting them know that, you know, Dillard can take a Qantas any time, right? Yeah, any time. You know, now you saw when I played him. Sam Team carried two touchdowns, 165 yards. I was raping him. <laughs> He's, he said I was raping him. Jesus Christ. Can we talk about those whistles? Um, I, did, I did not like that. Yeah, I hated that. Uh, they were at some... Uh, I don't know what they were doing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess he's pa uh, he's dead now and, and passed oh, away, which is really sad. sad. So he was, like, paying homage to this so kid. So when was that video? How long ago was that? It had to be a while ago. They were talking about Aaron Murray. He was Georgia's quarterback way long ago. He was in okay. the XFL last year. Okay. But, um, yeah, so he was, like, saying that, like, paying homage to this dude, I guess, was, like, a four-star recruit out of high school. He's a running back. Um, but, um Probably not great to joke about right Yeah, people. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking shit on Twitter. We we're gonna. Oh we're yeah, gonna we had to touch, touch on, that. on that. Yeah, that was. Do you uh, pull that tweet up? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull it up. Normally, I'm not an instigator on Twitter, but yes, some, you are. <laughs> okay, that's not true. I am. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> all these big dumber shit to like that's, that's actually all i do on twitter <laughs> anytime i tweet i'm talking shit to somebody the amount um, of threads that you've sent me about how you've gotten in arguments with other people <laughs> no, no 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 let's let's make this clear i don't get in arguments with people i get people riled up and then i and bounce. then they start arguments with you no no well i'll get them to argue 
And then you bounce. And then once I get them riled up and I get other people in there arguing, then I'm like, see ya. You drop a bomb. Yeah. And then you ghost them. I've done that with like artificial sweeteners. I've sent you one. I do that with like people with carbohydrates. I did that with people with one of Mark Manson's tweets where he was talking about like, you know, a good night's sleep and, uh, you know, a, a walk outside or whatever. Like, you know, we'll, you know, solve, you know, solve <laughs> most of your perceived problems. And people are like talking about health care and all this. I'm like he's a self-help, <laughs> self-help author. It's not what the fuck he's talking about. And I got like fucking 15 people in here going at it, like just replying. And I'm just, my Twitter <laughs> notifications are blowing up and I'm just sitting here like reading through them. And I'm like, that took two tweets to get them all uh-huh. riled up. It's amazing how a couple presses of buttons can just ruin people's day. It's fucking hilarious. It's and I hilarious. know I'm living in their head rent free. Uh-huh. Um, and a lot of people, you know, like I, I think for the most part, when you try to hurt other people's feelings, and you do that out of like fun and, and enjoyment. Yes. You're probably not happy. I do it when I see people that need to get checked. Yes. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a, there's a you big know? difference. And it's not, it, it, I'm not going under here calling people names. I get called names. Mm-hmm. I don't call other people names. You I just see people saying facts. stuff and I'm like, you don't get to say that. Right. Because here's the thing. If you say that in real life, you don't get away with it. No, you punch in the face. But you say it on the internet, and it's like, oh, well, I can say that. Right. You can't. Right. Because you're a bitch. Right. I Which say is why that. you have to say it behind the computer. Exactly. And I say that because I'm a bitch, too. I won't say, I, like, what they say when they say, like, they're fucking talking shit to athletes and whatever. I'm not going to say that in person. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, so, anyway, I, I just, uh, I think that shit's funny. So, I like to press buttons. Um, this guy says, he tweets, your massive squat isn't impressive if you can't run three kilometers effortlessly, too. Your huge bench press is pointless if you can't haul your ass over things. For the average guy, it makes more sense to be strong, lean, and physical condition, physically conditioned. Not bulky, strong, and physically unfit. Um, bulky, uh, I, I don't know what to say to that. And so <laughs> I want to give a couple short retorts. And then I'll share what I said, and then we'll we'll have Discuss. our exchange. Yeah. So your massive squat isn't impressive if you can't run three kilometers. So if I see someone squat seven hundred pounds, my first thought is not, well, we should who's going to ask him? Can this guy run three kilometers effortlessly? Who's going to ask? Should I ask or do you want to ask? Because whoever whoever asks is going to get punched in the fucking face. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? You know what I think when I see someone squat 700 pounds? Wow, that's impressive. I'm not going to ask this guy that question because I don't want him punching yeah. me in the face. And also, you know what? I can't do that. And I think that's impressive. So someone, and then. Well, do, you know, do you know what I think when I see someone squat 700 pounds? I got to catch up. Steroids. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't do it, they shouldn't yeah. be able to do it. Anyone stronger than me is on steroids. <laughs> yeah. um, the other one, your huge bench press is pointless if you can't haul your ass over things. I could haul my ass over the couch. The hall- I, I held my ass over this thing and sat right in here. Uh-huh. Over this fucking with the hauler chair. Over. Um, yeah, it's just weird. Uh, and, and a lot. I think this guy probably, I'm guessing it goes back to some of the comments that were saying things like, um, that's what our ancestors did. We'll, we'll read those in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so then he said, for the average guy, it makes more sense to be strong, lean, and physically conditioned. Yeah, sure. Like, But, but physically conditioned, his, his, his argument is, you're only physically conditioned if you could run three kilometers effortlessly. Why three? And haul your ass over things. And ha- yeah, haul your ass over things. What are things? I don't know what things are. <laughs> and is it like haul your ass over or jump over, climb over? What are you talking about? But but th- why three kilometers? Why is that? Right. And why does it have to be effortless? No one's running that effortlessly. You're still, even if it's like easier for you, you're still breathing hard after that. Right. I know people who run marathons who still are breathing heavy when they walk up a flight of stairs. Because right. that's fucking normal. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be, like, breathing where you're like, I'm, I need to sit down. But you probably should be breathing a little bit more Your after you rate fucking stairs. elevates. So, the not bulky, strong, and physically unfit. If by bulky you mean fat, then, um, okay, sure. But, like, not just having more muscle. I, I don't That's just weird. So, I quoted it. You can do a quote tweet, which is, like, you retweet it, and it shows the original tweet, and then also shows your tweet. 
And I said, weak people love saying shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which is so true. I mean, yeah. the only reason you would hate on something like that is because you cannot do it. Yeah. So it, it kind of reminds me. And by the way, uh, that actually didn't stir up any shit. Um, he didn't, guy didn't reply. No one else had any shit to say. Um, but what's funny is like, you know, people see someone squatting. Here's another thing you see a lot. Someone goes, um, nobody cares if you can squat like three times your body weight or, or twice your body weight if you can't even do 10 pull-ups. And you're like, well, nobody cares if you can do either of those things. People are just you know trying to I mean? move the goalposts though. C- yeah, they do. But here's the thing, like outside of, of your other gym bros, no one else gives a fuck. Right. And that's what goes back to like why you train for yourself. You do it for yourself because you want to do those things because you think that that's cool. And that's fine. You're the only one that has to think it's cool. Right. Because you enjoy it. So like if someone is training to squat two or three times their body weight or be an elite power lifter, they could not they couldn't give two shits about doing pull-ups. For someone who's really into calisthenics, like no you don't hear very very many powerlifters go, Oh, that's cool. You can do twenty pull ups, but you know, can you squat twice your body weight? <laughs> of course not, because that's not what they train for. Right. It's like why can't we just appreciate that both of these disciplines are really hard and it's really fuck you're not gonna be amazing at both. You can be pretty good at both, uh, but you're not gonna be elite at both. And um I just wish you could look at one and be like, damn, that squat's really impressive. 20 pull-ups unbroken is really fucking impressive too. Like they're both impressive, but just in, in different, different ways. ways. Yep. Absolutely. Pe- people looked at me during my bodybuilding show and they're like, that's disgusting. I would never want to look like that. I'm like, you can't. Right. One, <laughs> one, you can't, but two, I'm not doing this to look good. Yeah. I'm doing this because this is part of a sport that I am competing in and I want to be the fucking best at what I do. I'm trying to win. Right. I'm trying to win. Same thing when I'm in the weight room. Yes, I, I, I want to get good at multiple things. But like you said, I can either stick to one thing and try and be great at it, or I can try to do a bunch of things and just be average good at multiple things. It it blows my mind that, <laughs> this like, but this is the way some people think. I just think, like, the way that he was approaching it was like, and I said, what I say, like 90% of the people that can, that have a, very impressive bench press that can squat a very good amount of weight can also probably run three kilometers, not effortlessly, but But they can do it because it's just, it's a physical feat and they've put in the time and energy to be physically fit. Absolutely, He's probably taking that like, you know, 1% that do steroids that are on more trend than they know what to do with. And they get winded walking up a flight of stairs. Yeah. So I agree. So like this other guy goes, uh, like always train like an athlete or something. It'll change your life. Um, y- you know, here's the thing. I don't, I don't train like a fucking athlete, but how come when I go play slow pitch softball, I'm still the most, one of the most athletic fucking people <laughs> out there. I still am faster than almost every fucking dude out there on that field. I can still throw the ball pretty fucking hard. I still hit the shit out of the ball. I'm not tight and stiff. I don't stretch a ton. I don't run very much. Uh, I don't, and I don't pull anything either. Right. So like, what does that tell you? Maybe you don't need to fucking practice that shit all the time to be able to do it still if you've done it a long time before. But, but like, they're, they're, they're not comparing apples to apples. No. Because you take someone who's physically fit, take anything. If someone is act physically active, you don't even have to have a very impressive bench squat or deadlift. No. But you're still going to be better than the person that doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. They're, what Like, what he's doing is he's comparing, you know, you're 1% of the guys who are jacked up on trend, whatever, to, I'll say, you know, one of those, like, ultra marathon or ultra runners who it's yeah. like, yes, they do a lot more endurance. But if you were to take anyone that is physically fit and compare them to someone who is not, you know, the majority of America, yeah, they're going to be far better regardless of what they're doing in training than the people who aren't doing anything. Yeah. I think what he's really saying is if you don't train how I train, (laughs) I'm not impressed with what you do. That's what he's saying, right? So he's saying like, this is what I deem as fit. And if you don't fall under my criteria, then fuck you. I'm not impressed. And Hey, guess what? I don't, you don't get an award for being the best at working out. Right. I mean, I don't give a fuck if you can do a little bit of everything. That's really cool, man. Good for you. Uh, you're going to be average the rest of your life. Yeah, dude, I bet you get so much puss, <laughs> dude. 
I'd be like, this is, big bro, show me your matches on Tinder, but you fucking yeah. crush. <laughs> Another <laughs> thing, off. we've talked about this too. <laughs> Looking good does not get you more girls. Well, girls don't fucking care. Don't they, if they see that you're like a shred, if you walked around how you did during your bodybuilding show, not many girls would want to fuck you. Or like, maybe they want to fuck you. Not many girls would want to date you. Right. They would think, oh, he wouldn't, he wouldn't go to the bars with me. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't go to dinner with me. We were at Circa in Vegas, a giant pool party, and I was the leanest I've ever been. We had dudes coming up to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like straight. There was not one girl. A dude came, came up to us immediately. Mm-hmm. And then all of his friends probably wanted to fuck you. Yeah. There was not one girl that came yeah. up to me right. at the giant ass pool party. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here was, here's a, there was a reply and then there's a funniest shit that w- it was a reply to a reply. So some guy replies to the tweet and he said, when would you ever run three kilometers in real life as opposed to lifting stuff off the floor or standing up? That's a good point. Valid question. Right. I also don't think that we need to try to mimic our weightlifting to like, well, you get off a chair like this. So this is how you should squat. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) Just Um, do a bunch of body weight squats. Yeah. yeah. If If you were really trying to do that, then if you were like wanting to make your deadlifts more similar to picking stuff up, I'd say, okay, well, Pay attention to how you pick up your laundry basket the next time you do, because mm-hmm. you round the fuck out of your back when you do that. So that doesn't mean that you should deadlift with your back rounded, right? right? Um, everything does need to be crazy specific to real life. People just try and make things as specific as possible. Yeah. 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 So this guy replies to that and said, what if you need the energy to climb up a large flight of stairs or maybe run away from a terrorist or someone that wants to kill you? Deadlifting is nice and all, but not being able to to run is crazy to me. Again, I don't practice running, but I'm pretty fucking good at it. Why is that? Because I'm a fucking human. Uh-huh. Um, and so then the other part, what if you need the energy to climb a large flight of stairs? Let's look at specificity. You want to ha- you want to have a strong squat, squat more. Strong deadlift, deadlift more. You want to get better at climbing up large flights of stairs? Do the fucking stairmaster. There you or go. to be more specific, so climb fucking stairs in yes, your apartment building. Yes, so you don't have to run three kilometers effortlessly to also climb a large flight of stairs. So there's that, um, which is so funny. He's th- this guy's reply right now to when would you ever run three kilometers in real life? He goes, what if you need the energy to climb a large flight of stairs? How was that the same as running three kilometers? Apples to oranges. Run away from a terrorist. Ah. <laughs> Like, is anyone else seeing this too? <laughs> a terrorist? Or Dude, someone trying to kill you? <laughs> what are you taking? <laughs> Stop. Smoke some weed. Why are you, you're so paranoid. Or someone that wants to kill you. Don't be an asshole that makes people want to kill you. That's fucking hilarious. And okay, let's just say that these are his reasons. A terrorist or someone that wants to kill you. Deadlifting is nice, but being but not being able to run is crazy to me. Okay, um, if you're scared of someone killing you, deadlifting, deadlifting, it is. It's fun, absolutely. But if you have a terrorist coming at you or someone that wants to kill you, you should probably be learning how to fight instead of Martial learning arts. how to run. Yeah. Um, and so here's another one. This, and then we'll move on to the from from this. But this guy said, for millions of years. Men have run marathons daily through necessity. One doesn't need to deadlift 700 pounds to run down a gazelle. One needs to run. It's what we evolved to do, and we are better at covering long distances than almost any animal on the planet. You know what? He is right about the last part. We are better at covering long distances than almost any animal on the planet because we have cars and planes. That's fucking why, by the way. Um, because there's no way we're better at covering long distances than gazelles. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what? I, just, I've, I get that argument in the sense that, okay, yes, maybe evolutionarily speaking, maybe this is what we were built to do. Tens but, of thousands of right, years ago, sure. Times have changed. Like you can years ago. literally sit on your couch and not move a damn muscle and have everything brought to you. You don't have to get up to live, like to keep living. No, you don't. Is that optimal? Absolutely not. Yeah. But to to say that, oh, this is what we evolved to do. This is what we need to be doing now. 
No, no, I don't. Because we've also evolved from then, and technology has what's the word I'm looking for? exponentially improved. Like we don't need to run for a long distance. You can if you want to. You don't need to. You don't need to. We have cars. We have planes. We have trains. We have bikes. We have Uber Eats. Uber Eats. Yeah, you could literally not leave your place and not have to worry about food. You don't even have to use your computer to masturbate anymore. Well, that's because you you can just call you and you'll go over and do it for them. It's true, but they could also just like pull up something on their phone. Granted, you could always <laughs> you, you've always been able to use your imagination. That's what they did in the old days. <laughs> I assume there's this crazy thing called your mind. Yeah. What do you think was the first form of porn? By the way, I, was, I don't know why I just thought of that. I'm going back to like imagination. I want to say fucking drawings and caves. Oh yeah, probably. Evolutionary speaking, baby. I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was. Yeah. Could you imagine being like the first person to like find draw those? a pair of tits? You'd be like, <laughs> or, or the first person to like, imagine you're like looking at these ancient ruins and you're like, are those tits? <laughs> why? Why? Why do I have a boner? Like, Man, <laughs> why am I jerking thick. myself off hey, right now? Guys, I know that these are like stick figures with like big ass and tits, but like she's kind of thick. <laughs> Could you, okay, so let's go. Let's go on that route with you know shit being drawn in caves. What do you think? Do you think it was just like big ass, big tits, or like? I think probably. Like a, they had to include a bush in there, you know. They don't have razors. <laughs> They're all fucking nasty. Oh Jesus Christ! I wonder if uh, fucking STIs were a thing back then. Probably. I mean, we people, definitely didn't invent those. I, no, I know, but I, you know, like people had to have been dying from that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go, <laughs> I'm gonna go in the weirdest rabbit hole tonight, dude. If the government saw my fucking search history on Google, they would be like. You'd be in a psych ward. No, no. I just think they'd be like, this guy's all over the place. Like, what the fuck? He's just, he's reading about stoic philosophy, and then he's, like, looking at drawings, at cave drawings of tits, and, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Like, is this guy a professor, or is he, like, a dude that lives at home and masturbates four times a day? <laughs> 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 Which one is he? He's both. He's all. Like the fucking, I'd be the Dosakis guy, the <laughs> most interesting man in the world. That's funny. <laughs> oh my god. Um, should we get into these NFL picks? Like to be. Is anything really even happening this week? Uh, Vikings aren't playing. So. I mean, the only reason there it's happening at all actually is is because of Justin Fields. Not the Bears, but <laughs> Justin Fields. Strictly Justin Fields. Yeah. No, honestly, though, because I don't know, man. It, uh, it's been a fucking roller coaster of a season, and the only reason I'm, like, not totally depressed watching it is because Justin Fields is very exciting to watch, and he, he could be, you know, a franchise guy. I think he will be. Um, so I'm excited to see him keep growing, but as a, as a whole, we're, like, kind of <laughs> okay. Um, I don't Have you know. given up on the playoffs? Or is no. there still hope, but you're just not going to be heartbroken? I think there's hope, but, like, I don't expect it. I see. Okay, um, yeah. I'm more just, like, I just want to see Fields do well. You're hopeful, from this point but on. you're not, like, playoffs or bust. Yeah, no. I, I mean, because, I, like, I don't think it will make the playoffs, but, like, it would be cool. Yeah. Um, see, yeah Ron, you, you always want to see your team in on the playoffs. Because I'm super hopeful, because the way I look at the Viking season is – I could I could see us having lost only one game so far this year. Yeah. But we're also <laughs> 3 and 3 yeah. and there are times where the offense just looks like they don't even know how to play football. Yeah. So I'm torn, but playoffs. Well, you said Kirk Cousins should have had like what two yeah. two or three more game winning drives. Two for sure, two it might have been. Well, so he's had a total of potentially six. Two of them happening in the same game. But yeah. Miss field goals. Miss field goals. Delvin Cook's alleged fumble. It wasn't a fucking fumble, but... That was not a fumble. That was week one against the Bengals, right? So that was what sent was, it into yep. overtime? Or no, that was in overtime. That was in overtime. They were driving downfield, too. Driving, marching. Dude, you not guys should have scored, yeah. Yep. No, it wasn't. I was watching that game with you. Yeah, I'm fucking um, hated. I know. So, we'll go through these picks uh, together here. We got um, the Broncos against the Browns. Our Browns, sorry, Browns. Broncos at Browns. Jesus. Browns. Yeah, I'm taking the Browns. Um, Kyle Fuller, by the way, who we let go to, we didn't re-sign him. And a lot of Bears fans were pissed about that. He got benched after five games. He played like two snaps last week against the Raiders. Damn. So I think that was uh, 
Good move. Ryan Pace. Good shit. Yep. Um, Chiefs at Titans. Titans? Dude, I know. It's it's hard because I feel like you want to pick based off of last year's Chiefs yep. and the prior year's Chiefs, but I don't know. Um, I think uh, Derrick Henry can run the fucking ball, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, dude, I'm going to take the Chiefs. I, I, I feel like they got to figure this shit out. Um, Patrick Mahomes, step your shit up because <laughs> I don't want a lip tattoo. <laughs> uh, Washington football team at Packers. It's an easy win for me. Fuck the Packers, Washington. I'm taking the Packers. I think you're an idiot for that, but I respect <laughs> it. I respect the principle. Um, I will never pick the Packers. I'm glad because I know that gives me at least more wins than it does losses. <laughs> Um, Bengals. You never know. <laughs> yeah, it's just true. <laughs> hey, any given Sunday. That's why they. That's why they play the games. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Bengals at Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, Ravens. Panthers at Giants. Panthers. Yeah, I I will say this. I'm off the Sam Darnold train. I don't think he's good. I don't either. I think that. He's good against dog shit teams, and you know what? So is Mitch Trubisky. Yep, that's all I'm saying. I also think the Giants are dog shit. So, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, but Daniel Jones is okay. He's all right. He's okay. He's got to f- figure out his fucking turnovers, but he's good. Um, it's all right. Yeah, he's. Oh yeah, I should say good. <laughs> good. He's okay. He's okay. He's pretty okay. <laughs> um, Falcons at oh, Dolphins. You got to answer that one. Oh no, I said Panthers. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Falcons at Dolphins. <laughs> I mean, it's Jesus a toilet Christ. bowl, right? What a what what could be a worse game than this one? I don't know. The Jags Dolphins. Jags Jags Falcons I think, maybe. I think Jags Giants Dolphins and Falcons and the Jets and the too, Lions. I guess. And the Lions. Lions are fun to watch. I like the, I, they I are. mean, I like Jared Goff. Dude, there's like seven really fucking bad teams this year. Yes. Like terrible. Yes. But anyway, Falcons Dolphins. I mean, that's a fucking hard one. <laughs> Dolphins? You can tell how confident I am in that pick. I know. It's, I'm going to say Falcons to keep things interesting. And I like Matt Ryan. I do like Matt Ryan. Their team's awful, though. Um, did you, did you, have you been seeing the rumors with Deshaun Watson going to Miami? No, but you said that. A lot of it's coming from Houston writers. So that's what makes me like maybe they're kind of trying to push some – storyline or agenda I, I don't know maybe his stock back up maybe they feel like hey if and apparently there was one report that was saying that it could be washington football team in there too like washington football team would get tua and then the dolphins could get an extra first round pick to give to the texans interesting so i don't know i yeah i don't know if that's true or not um but uh, I just couldn't imagine a team trading for him knowing that that GM and owner, they're going to have to face the fans. who are They're going to have like, to face everyone. Yeah, and be like, hey, what the fuck was that about? This guy's got a lot of accusations against him. Mm-hmm. I feel like they had to be using that as like a leveraging, like they're trying to say this kind of stuff, so other teams are like, oh, shit. Well, if they're interested, we're interested too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I really wonder how many teams – would be willing to overlook it and trade for him anyway. Cause the only possible scenario is either he's actually innocent, which let's be real. Right. Um, or that there, this team is just going to like trade for him and then hope it kind of just like blows over and hope that people forget about it. And in this climate, not going to happen. Yeah. Not no, going to happen. Not in this culture. No. So I'm taking the Falcons. You're taking the dolphins. Um, here's another shit game. Jets, Patriots. I'm going to say Jets. Fuck it. I, I mean, I could see it. I could see it. I'm taking the Patriots. Um, I just like their team overall a little bit better, even though they're not that good. I got a buddy on the Jets. I'm like, this is a shit game. Yeah. Um, Cashman, don't fuck me over. <laughs> Eagles, Raiders. Raiders. Yep. Raiders, too. Uh, Lions at Rams. Rams. Really? <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, did I say the wrong team? I'm taking the Rams too. Um, Bears at Bucks. I'm going to say the Bucks, but I have a gut feeling the Bears are going to win. I really don't think that. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, the Bucks are favored back at 11, but I know. Fuck but it, that's I'm a game. The Bears. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Fuck it. This is a game that the Bears will fucking win. This is a game that, that I'll be more upset 
about them losing because I picked them to win, then I'll be upset <laughs> about them actually yep. losing. But fuck it. I'm picking them because I just have I had this weird feeling that like after Justin Fields does a shit game, he comes back and he learns from his on. mistakes. I was watching some plays that he missed against Cleveland that he came back against Detroit and just nailed the same same passing concepts. Maybe not the same exact plays, but same concepts. He doesn't make the same mistake twice a lot of the time. And I think the, the main thing he needs to improve on right now is he's just got to understand that those linemen that he's used to being to, he's used to being able to outrun very easily. Like, Can't hey, these that. linemen, you're not playing Rutgers, right? You're not playing other like big. You're not playing Michigan. You're not playing right. Indiana or Northwestern. Like, you're playing NFL dudes that were you know the best player on their team at Alabama, right? Right. So you know, it's a little bit different. Um, we are missing Robert Quinn. That hurts real bad because he's one of the top ad rushers in the NFC right now, actually in the whole NFL right now. Um, but fuck it. I'm taking the Bears. I'm going with my heart. Fuck it. Let's do it. Um, Texans at Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, Cardinals are going to – they should beat them really good. Uh, Colts at 49ers. 49ers. Yeah, apparently Jimmy Garoppolo might be making his comeback. This really? Week. Yeah, I'm taking the Niners too. Um, there were some people – that were tweeting at the Texans after, uh, you know, Jimmy G was saying, yeah, I'm good. I feel fine. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, Hey, Texans, if you want, that's you want to give it like, I think they're kind of trying to lobby to say, if you're going to make a trade with someone and you need a quarterback, give us some picks. Yep. You're getting some for Deshaun. Give us one for Jimmy G. That's funny. What do you think Jimmy Garoppolo would be worth from a pick standpoint? I, I'm so bad with that stuff. Not what he would have been. I'd give like three years ago, a second and a third. Yeah, that's it. Three years ago, he would have been couple first round, yeah. first and second maybe. Probably, I'd give I'd give up a second, and then like maybe a, a I'd say like a, a second round pick next year, and then like a fifth round pick the next year or something. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't give that much. Yeah, I, I don't know Just enough about the good. the draft capital. Yeah, um, Saints at Seahawks on Monday night. I don't like the Seahawks this year because yeah. Russell Wilson still out. still out. So is Chris Carson. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm going Saints. Same. I'm taking the Saints. So what ones do we have different? We took I, Bears, Bucks are different. Jets, Patriots, Falcons, Dolphins, Packers, Washington, and then Chiefs, Titans. We got a bunch of different. So we got a, we got a handful of different. This is probably the most different. It's been games that we've had. We still got to do the math from last week because we didn't post our picks yeah. on Instagram last week. I can go through and look at that. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll look at it. Um, well, it's gonna be a shitty, shitty week for football, but um, at least you know what making these picks makes it more interesting yes. and makes it more fun for me to watch. Yes, because otherwise this would be like some of the worst week of games. I mean, it is the worst week of games this whole season. But because I look through yeah. the rest of the weeks, oh, so like there's no way that any other week is this bad, and that that's it is. Funny. This is the worst week. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. See how it unfolds. But till then, we should get into a couple of our listener questions. Question one: Is it necessary to squat and deadlift? Uh, yeah, you do it every day. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, is it necessary to load those movement patterns? I don't know. Not really. Like, necessary to what? Um, here's the thing. Like, you, you squat to sit down on a chair. So maybe I'm being a smart ass. You deadlift and you pick shit up off the floor. Um, is it necessary to do a, let's just say your goal is to build muscle. Um, these movements are necessary if you want to maximize your progress. Um, but uh, granted, listen, here's this thing, uh, a barbell back squat is not necessary. A barbell conventional or sumo deadlift is not necessary. Um, if you want to build your glutes and hamstrings, you should probably do Romanian deadlifts. And by probably, I mean, definitely. And squatting. I mean, if you can't, I don't know if you count a Bulgarian split squat, a squat or a lunge. I don't fucking care whatever one you want to label it as. It's a great movement for your glutes and for your quads. Absolutely. Um, 
let's say you consider that a lunge. Do you have to barbell back squat? No, but a leg press is kind of a squatting motion. We're more looking for some kind of knee dominant exercise. So the way I look at it is, you know, be flexible with your exercises that you want to do, but be strict with the movement pattern, right? So still do some kind of squatting movement, whether that's a goblet squat or even like a machine, like hack squats are amazing. Pendulum squats are great. Um, and a lot of people say, well, when you do the machines and you don't get the stability, it's like, okay, well do some single leg work, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's not that, it's not that hard. Um, but I, I would even er- go on the side of saying that machines for most people are actually going to be better for growing your legs because how many people can decide like in their squat, right? Like you, we know if I want to squat and get more glute, I'm going to hinge a little bit more. I'm not going to let my knees come as far forward, right? But if I want to get more quad, I'm going to go with a lot of knee bend. I'm going to keep my torso more upright, um, and I can kind of change my squat based off of what muscles I'm trying to hit more. Um, a lot of people maybe don't have the body control to do that or the like the motor control. So for them, maybe a leg press or a hack squat would be a little easier because you can just kind of set yourself up in a position that allows you to target either one. Um, So like the movement itself is necessary to maximize progress, but like it's always hard for me to answer that, is this necessary or do you have to do this? Like, well, necessary for what? Right. You gotta gotta look at the goals. I have every single one of my clients, I have always had every single one of my clients doing some variation of a squat and a deadlift. Mm -hmm. But is it necessary? I mean, I'm not training people that want to. And I could also argue if you're trying to maximize your muscle building, getting really good at those movements is only going to build that foundation to allow you know, the isolation movements to be a little bit better. But I just, I th- again, they're fundamental. Human- Our body, like that would be like, is it necessary to eat carbs? No. But like, is it going to be optimal? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So it's and like I like this question because this there is a camp that's saying oh you don't need to squat or deadlift. It's like I mean you, again you and there's don't. also a camp that says there's only three movements you really need and blah 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 and you're like well 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 that's the thing because everyone looks in the, in the fitness industry and if you're not for something that means you're against it. But it's a c- it's a contrarian take because yes. it, it, people share it and it goes viral and they go people send it to each other and go oh what do you think about this yep. like I think that person is chasing clout right. that's what I think I mean I could find a perfect example like we could do that too if we want right but we fucking don't because we actually care about putting out good fucking content right and we don't just talk out of our ass all the f- I mean we do talk out of our <laughs> ass but not about actual like information shit I could sit here and like let's say I have a client who just slipped a disc. Yeah. And I don't have them benching or squatting because they have a slip disc in their back. I could sit here and say, "Yeah, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna squat and deadlift because it's not necessary. It's yeah. not necessary right now because you're fucking injured. But should that be something we work to get back towards? I think absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Question two: When calculating my macros, I struggle to determine my activity level. Any suggestions on that? Um, get rid of that tracker and track your calories for two weeks trying to maintain your weight because so what what those trackers do is it puts it you plug in a bunch of numbers and it puts it into an equation you could have two of the exact same people that have the quote-unquote exact same activity level and their metabolisms could be different so it it can give you a rough idea you know and you can probably google it because a lot of them like so for precision nutrition for example their activity level is like light, moderate, whatever. There's like five levels. And then it says example. You know, if you sit at a desk, this is what you should put your activity level at. If you are a teacher where that's a little bit of standing and a little bit of sitting, that's what this would be. If you are a server, so you're up on your feet. Right, and it just keeps progressing it that way. So if you have something like that, that'll give you a little bit better of an estimate. But honestly, I always tell my clients, like, you should track for an extended period of time, I say about two weeks because you, you can then take the averages of the weight for two weeks. And the idea is to maintain the weight so you know how many calories you're eating at your maintenance. And then you can go from there up or down. 
I'm so disappointed with your answer. Why? Tell them to download our fucking ebook. 30 days is probably fuckable. <laughs> or, I was going to let you say, do that. So here's the That's other thing plug. you could do. You could also just ignore everything Zach just said and go <laughs> download our ebook, 30 Days of Totally Fuckable, <laughs> on our website, www.5yearplanmedia.com. This ebook will literally tell you exactly how to get your activity level. You have three <laughs> choices. You can, like, it's very, it's very simple. It's very easy. We'll walk you through exactly how to do it. Um, and Zach is right. You, you can also track everything and do it for a couple of weeks. But the, really, like, the easiest way to do it, too, if you really want to do it that way, you can. Our book gives you an, a really simple way to do it. You have a calorie multiplier depending on your activity level, your body weight times a multiplier, whether you're Do you want to give everyone active. the answer or do they have to go to the ebook? They, have to go, they can go to the ebook. It's not that hard. Go on no, I'm saying, but do you want to give them the answer? Yeah, I'm going to tell them right now. Like, so they don't have to download it? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a light answer. It's not. I'm not okay. giving them everything. I see. But you have three levels you can multiply your, your body weight by, depending on how active you are. And then you just start following those macros or that calorie. Because you can either look at a macros approach or a calories approach. And from that point, what you'll do is you'll keep your body weight and you'll look at what's happening. If you're trying to lose weight and the weight's going down, great, you're on track. If you're trying to gain weight and the weight's going up, great. If it's not, what you can do is we have another page that says how to know if it's working. <laughs> and so what you do from that point, if what you're doing isn't working, you look at our table and it'll tell you if you're trying to lose weight and you're gaining weight, do this. If you're trying to lose weight and your weight stays the same, do this. If you're trying to lose weight and you're losing weight, good job. Good job. Don't change anything. It's that fucking easy. It tells you what to do if you're trying to bulk gives you every scenario what to do if it's working what to do if it's not working if you are if you are listening to this and you've been listening to us for a while and you're asking this question and you haven't downloaded 30 days to totally fuckable the fuck what are, are you doing? doing what are you doing yep. what are you doing and second if you have done this and you are asking this question and you have downloaded 30 days to totally fuckable what the fuck are you doing <laughs> you need help Go read the fucking book. It's so easy. I, I literally, we wrote this at a kindergarten level. Um, <laughs> it, it really is that easy. And the only reason we had to, to write it at a fucking kindergarten level is so Zach could actually proofread it. True. So <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fucking easy to read through. It's if I can read, read it, you can read it. Yeah, it'll all work out. Um, download 30 Days is Totally Fuckable. Um, go to our website to download that right now. It's www.5yearplanmedia.com. Pause this, go fucking download it right now, read through it, and then come back and finish this episode. Welcome back. We're done with the episode. <laughs> Sorry if I gave you blue balls. Um, Zach's got to bounce. Jesse and I got to make some dinner and watch Blacklist and watch Raymond Reddington fuck some dudes up. Um, and that's I, how, that's how for I today. thought that was going. You said fuck some dudes. <laughs> Up. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna watch those videos when Jesse falls asleep. <laughs> oh man! Choke your own chicken. Hey, probably five knuckle shuffle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you remember those. So what well, was the man. other one? Um, butter the corn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot on there. Those are my favorites. We should read through those again. Sometime. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Thank you for watching this episode of Five Year Plan. If you like what we're doing here on the show, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want one of your questions answered on a future podcast, you can write into our website at www.5yearplanmedia.com or you can write into our Instagram page at 5 Year Plan Media. You can find me on Instagram at Z underscore Condon. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Connor Youngman underscore. Peace. See ya.